Oh man, what's the excitement <laughs> over here, man? This dude just ran a reamer in 4140 like 10 times faster than I've ever run a reamer. So like uh, 10 inches per minute? No, nah, okay, fine. It was more like 100 <laughs> times faster than I've ever oh, run a reamer. Oh man. Oh, how fast? 184 inches a minute. 184. 4140. Yeah. Oh. Fastest I've ever gone with a reamer. <laughs> That's like the Bugatti of reamers, man. That doesn't even make any sense. Like the reamer doesn't even have flutes on it. And reaming is one of the slowest processes in the entire game. So taking that up to high speed reaming and going that fast, that increases crazy productivity and helps you guys make money. You're gonna school them on reamers. Yeah. Every high speed, baby. Oh, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> We're taking it from Trevor Speed to Barry Speed. Oh man, reaming baby, let's go. I'm about to show you why this tool is the Bugatti of reamers. We're gonna be running this tool at over 500 surface footage and 184 inches a minute. This tool is about to blow your mind with how fast it runs through all of these holes. Now look, if you're only manufacturing precision holes every now and then, or you only have a handful to make, then this $30 high speed steel reamer is probably gonna be okay. But today's video, I'm gonna show you how to maximize efficiency and run up to 10 or 20 times faster than this tool can using a high performance reamer. How do you manufacture a precision hole? Now, I'm not talking about any generic hole. I'm talking about precise holes that have to be within tenths. Now you may think that switching from a generic drill to a high performance drill, but even high performance drills aren't going to be precision enough. Well, that's where reamers come in. Well, a reamer is used when you need to accurately size a hole. It needs to have good surface quality and cylindricity. Reamers are also more consistent throughout the life of the tool than a drill is. But reamers do have their limitations. For instance, a reamer can't typically improve the location or straightness of a hole. Instead, it's going to follow the pre-existing drilled hole. Reaming tip number one. Since the reamers follow the pre-existing hole, then we need to pay extra attention to the drilling operation. So you may want to consider using a high performance drill over a general purpose drill. Now in our case, I'm using a Kinemetal Universal drill. This drill has a four margin design, where a typical general purpose drill is margin-less, meaning it doesn't have any margins. Now margins on a drill improve the hole's roundness, accuracy, and straightness. Taking care of all of this up front is what's going to give us a successful reaming operation. We just drilled 250 holes in 4140 steel. Half were all the way through the part and the other half were blind. That's because we're going to be performing two different tests today. Let's jump into SolidWorks and Mastercam and take a closer look at what we're doing. First, we have 125 through holes that we're going to test a new fluteless reamer that is designed to maximize efficiency and run up to 20 times faster than traditional reamers in through hole applications. We're also going to test a new blind hole reamer. So I have 125 blind holes that will get progressively deeper with each row. Here we're testing to see how the tool performs and if the depth of the hole has any effect on chip evacuation. Because the design of a reamer will differ depending on if you're reaming through holes versus blind holes. But there is one thing that is the same. And that leads us to tip number two, which is chip management. So first, let's take a look at through holes. Now, I have here a standard high-speed steel reamer. Now, you'll notice that there's really nothing special about this tool. And really, the only thing you notice about it is that it has straight flutes. Well, straight flute reamers and taps really don't have a chip management system. It is pushing the chips forward, but it's not really doing nothing to control the chip. Now we could step up to a tool like this, which is a standard carbide reamer. Now, if you notice it has helical flutes, but it's a left-handed helix. So it's not going to bring the chips out. It's going to actually push them forward. So you say, what's the difference between that and the straight flute? Well, the spiral flute is going to help keep the chips tighter in long chipping materials like this. Now, something like cast iron, it really wouldn't matter that much. But long chipping materials, you really need to control that chip in order to be successful and get a good reamed hole. 
Now these other tools can get you by, but we're about to show you the pinnacle of high performance. Now Kinemetal is redefining through hole reaming with this tool. Kin ream front gash reamer. For instance, it doesn't even have any flutes. It only has a front gash design. So since it doesn't have any flutes, the core diameter is actually larger, making this tool more rigid. It also has six teeth as opposed to four, like a normal carbide reamer. Now combine all of that with the substrate and the coating, and we're gonna be able to increase our feeds and speeds dramatically, making this tool extremely efficient. So tip number three is tool run out. Now, you really wanna shoot for one to two tenths total run out. That's where things like hydraulic holders and shrink fit holders can really come in handy. Now, if you have a tool presetter, then you could do this before you ever put the tools in the machine. Or you can take an indicator like this and check it right inside the machine. We're gonna check right on the tip and see what the runout is in this hydraulic holder. You see, checking all the teeth on this, we're out at maybe three tenths total runout. So I'm good with that. We're gonna see what that gives us. Now, if your holders can't reach this type of runout, if you're running like ER holders, it's gonna be very hard to get it this good. So now that we've verified the runout in this tool, we're gonna to go back and chamfer all of the holes before this tool runs to eliminate any inconsistencies. Hey, wake up. You need to go to store.titansacnc.com because every single month we're running a different promotion. Save you money, save a lot of time, just check out our store, or don't, I really don't care. <laughs> no, I do care. No, really, check out our store because you're gonna save money, but more importantly, you're gonna support free education. Well, we're gonna be running this tool at over 500 surface footage and 184 inches a minute. And this tool is about to blow your mind with how fast it runs through all of these holes. Now that is insane, fastest I've ever gone with a reamer. I can't wait to see it, so let's get to it. We just reamed 125 holes in 4140, an inch and three quarter deep in under three minutes. That's insane. Look at these chips. Now this is what I was talking about when I said chip management. It's keeping a nice tight spiral on these chips. So not only is it pushing it out of the way, it's keeping it nice and organized. But that still leaves the two most important questions unanswered. And that is, is the hole on size? And what does the tool look like after we've just ran it this fast? The tool still looks brand new. You can't even tell that there's any marks on it at all. You can't even tell it's been ran. Now let's get some gauge pins and check the size of our holes. So the first thing I'm gonna check it with is a 256 minus pin. And if I check this with my micrometer, I can see it's about 255.9. Checking in a couple of places. And then that's the same size as my reamer is. The reamer is a 6.5 millimeter or 0.255.9. I'm gonna check the first hole. Let's check the last hole. Pretty good, now I'm just gonna check a couple random holes in between. So the go pin goes. Now my next pin size that I have is a .256.5. So it's a little bit larger. So if I check it with my mics, I'm getting 256.3, 256.4, somewhere around in there. And if we go and check, I can see it doesn't go in at all. Now that's a four or five tenth range there that's not gonna tell us exactly what that hole size is. If I wanted to see that, I would have to get some Deltronic pins, but this is as close as I got for now. But I can see that the reamer didn't blow it out. It's, it's actually pretty close to size. And even at that accelerated speed, this reamer did an amazing job. But what about blind holes? Now we know that this tool pushes that chip forward, so that's not gonna work with blind holes. It's gonna pack into the bottom of the hole. So for that, we need to switch over to a right-handed helical flute reamer. 
Now that's gonna differ from the original version that I showed you for the through holes where it had left-handed helix, which is gonna push the chip forward. A right-handed helix is gonna bring that chip through the top of the hole. Another big difference is the coolant holes. Now we can see on this reamer that the coolant holes are on the side of the tool. So it's where the flutes would be. It's gonna help push those chips down. Now on our reamer for blind holes, the coolant hole is gonna be on the bottom. So it's gonna blast that coolant towards the bottom of the hole and force the chips out. All right, so 125 holes down, 125 to go. just completed three rows of holes. And that brings us to tip number four, and that is finding the correct chip load. Now chip load can not only affect tool life, it can also affect your chip management, especially for blind holes. Now for this next row, we're gonna reduce our feed rate by 20%. So we're gonna run at 80% feed for this entire row, and we're gonna leave all the other settings exactly the same, and we'll see what happens. See, just by reducing the feed rate by 20%, now we're getting some bird nest or the chips are wrapping around the tool. That's because we're not running enough chip load. So running something too slow can be just as bad as running it too fast. We really need to run these tools for what they are designed to do. That's gonna give it optimal performance. Now you can see that after 25 holes, this ain't too bad, but if you were running lights out or a high production, then this could be a really big issue because eventually those chips are gonna start interfering with that tool. Another thing that's gonna have an effect on the chip management and the tool life is the size of the pre-drilled hole. Now for the Ken Ream series, Kinemetal recommends that you drill the hole eight to 12 thousandths smaller than the reamer for reamers up to 10 millimeters or 394 in size. Now for reamers that are 10 to 14 millimeters or 551, they recommend that you leave eight to 16 thousandths on the diameter. So now we're gonna put the feed rate back to 100% and run this last set of holes, which is an inch and a half deep. If you haven't already, you need to create a profile on cncexpert.com. This is a social platform created by machinists for machinists. It's a great place to upload your work, get certified, and also network with other machinists just like you. All right, now let's get back to the video. Now all 125 holes are finished, and you can see that going back to 100% feed, we don't have any bird nesting. It got those chips out just like it was supposed to. Now it's time to check the holes with the same pins that we used before. 256 minus. Ooh, boing, 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 boing. Mm. There's that popping noise Bo No Go loves so much. You like that? What's up, Bo? You like it? All right, that's the go pin. Now for the no go. Don't even come close to starting. So the reamers held size, they still look brand new, and we were running 10 or 20 times faster than you normally would with a traditional reamer. Now you can see why the Ken Ream series is the Bugatti of all reamers. And hopefully the tips that you learned in this video will give you the confidence that you need to ream precision holes on your next operation. And also, if you're in a production environment and you need to maximize efficiency, then you need to check out the Ken Ream series of reamers from Kinemetal. Thank y'all for watching. We'll see y'all next time. Quiet on set. As soon as Chris gets done. Let me blow my part off. Hey, you done? <laughs> Can't take that guy nowhere. Oh, let me start some work at 4.30 in the evening. <laughs> boing, boing, boing.